Enabling Office 365 Services, Exam Ref 70-347. Objective 4.3, Plan for Exchange Online. This objective covers the following topics. Plan client requirements for archive, in place hold and litigation hold, configure all what access and configure active sync. Plan client requirements for archive. Users can access archive mailboxes on a computer running Outlook or Outlook web app through a browser, but they are unable to access the archive mailbox when using Outlook on a mobile device or accessing Outlook web app through a browser on a mobile device. Uh, archive mailboxes can be used with the following versions of Outlook. Uh, basically, uh, any version of Outlook from Outlook 2007. Uh, and, and, and the archive mailbox appears in Outlook as a folder which basically has uh, the name, of whatever the name of your mailbox is. There are several methods the user can use to transfer items to the archive mailbox. Uh, this include uh, one, move messages manually. Uh, two, use the inbox rules to move messages. Three, have retention palaces to move messages. And four, important messages from PST files. In place hold versus litigation hold. Litigation hold is a feature introduced in Exchange Server 2010 that allows preservation of data for e-discovery. Uh, the feature is also available in Exchange Server 2013 and Exchange Online. Uh, you apply litigation hold on a per mailbox basis. Uh, for example, if you want to preserve the contents of all conversations between uh, Don, Kim, and Dan, using the litigation hold functionality, you would need to place all three mailboxes on litigation hold. In place hold, however, allows um, holds to be applied on the basis of a query. For example, you would put an in-place hold on all conversations between Don, Kim, and Dan, but the hold would not apply to items outside the contents defined by the in-place hold query. When a mailbag is placed on a litigation hold, the following occurs. Uh, one, content in the archive mailbag is preserved. Original and modified versions of items are preserved. Deleted items are preserved for a specified period, uh, uh, period or until the hold is removed. And items in the recoverable items are also preserved. When a user's mailbox is put on litigation hold, the user can delete items from their mailbox, but the items are retained by exchange. Uh, litigation hold uh, duration, it's in days. Uh, you use the, the properties here to uh, specify how long the mailbox will be on litigation hold. Um, if you want uh, for an infinite duration, then you simply leave uh, this field blank. You could also put a note and you could also, uh, the legal department may have a URL to inform the user that the mailbox is it's on, it's on hold. It's important to remember that um, uh, the litigation hold can take up to 60 minutes to be enforced. Uh, you will need to take this period into account in scenarios where you need to immediately preserve the contents of a mailbox and you suspect that the person subject to the litigation hold uh, might attempt to scrub evidence. Uh, you should talk to your organization's human resources department about putting policies in place that provide enough time for a litigation hold to be uh, enacted before the person subject to that hold is informed that uh, this has occurred. To put a mailbox on litigation hold, uh, you have to go to the recipients link on the Exchange Admin Center and then mailboxes and basically just double click or click on the little pencil on the mailbox that you want to put on litigation hold. Uh, on this screenshot, notice on the right 
uh, what it says in place hold, it says that the user is in on hold. Um, once you double click on the mailbox, then you're going to go to the properties of that mailbox where you could enable the litigation hold. So once you go to the properties of the, the mailbox that you want to put in litigation hold, uh, you click on mailbox features and uh, then you go to the uh, litigation hold uh, component on, on, on the top of the list over there. And you just basically notice how the litigation hold is disabled. You just click on enable and you follow the prompt and that mailbox will be put on litigation hold. So this is the screen, uh, the, the screen that comes up after you click on the enable the litigation hold. And um, so here you can put the, the number of days. In this example, this mailbox will be uh, uh, put it on hold for uh, for 180 days. You can enter uh, uh, comments uh, or notes on the uh, notes box, and some company may have a, a, a URL, a web page. Uh, normally, the legal department that basically has information, just telling the user that the mailbox is on hold and, and information about what that means and uh, um, uh, what the user can or cannot do. To remove a litigation hold, you go to the properties of that mailbox under mailbox features again and just click on disable on litigation hold. Managing litigation hold with uh, PowerShell. PowerShell. You use the uh, set dash mailbox command lit to uh, enable uh, litigation hold on a mailbox. Um, just as the examples over here. To enable, you just set the litigation hold to true. Um, and um, to enable it for a, a number of days, then you use the uh, litigation uh, duration parameter and then the number of days. Uh, if you want to, let's say, find um, uh, all the mailboxes, if you if you want to put you know all the mailboxes in the litigation hall, which is very unlikely, uh, very few company you know would do that. Uh, you can use the get uh, mailbox with the uh, result size and limit, and then filter, you know, for the type of recipients where the mailbox is. It's, um, uh, you know, the, the, just filter for the type of recipients as as user mailbox, and then you can set the litigation hall enable to true. And in the same token, if you want to um, remove or disable the um, litigation hall, you also use the set dash mailbox command let and then you set the litigation hall enable to false, just as uh, in the example over here. In place hold, in place hold is done uh, on the Exchange Admin Center in the compliance and uh, management uh, section. Uh, and then you just basically click on in place e discovery and hold and, and here is where you, you click on the plus sign to define the the query that you want to use in your search for the items that you want to to hold now to create an in place e discovery and hold um, you need to uh, put a name on it and optionally a description of what the haul is about. So once you click on next on the previous window, you get to the um, uh, basically the section where you select the users that you want to um, to do the in place hold. Uh, you can uh, select more than one user using the uh, control key. You can select multiple users. And, and basically just uh, add them to the uh, in place hold here. So once on the uh, search query page, you can include all content in the selected mailboxes or you choose uh, to filter based on criteria. Uh, it is only possible to filter by criteria if the user creating the in place a discovery and hall is a member of the discovery management role. Uh, 
uh, and some of the criteria that you can uh, use are keywords, a start and end date, the from, the to CC and BCC field, message types, and, and so forth. So here you can make um, those selections. So basically we're going to do a search query based um, on criteria and uh, on the keywords uh, we're going to use uh, hovercraft. You're going to specify the uh, start, the end date. Uh, you can specify the, uh, the from field. Where, where did the message come from or uh, where was the email sent to and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, you could also select a message type whether it is an email or it is a meeting or a task or notes, document, content, etc. Uh, even uh, a Skype for business items you can use here. In this window you uh, specify whether the whole is indefinitely or you can specify uh, the number of days to hold the items uh, relative to the received date. So finally in the in place e-discovery and hold, once we're done with the hold we can see the name of the hold, the status of the hold, when it was uh, modified and who was it created by and then notice on the on the right uh, panel how it says that uh, the hold is indefinitely. You can create an in place hold using the new dash mailbox search commandlet. Uh, you can also um, you can disable an in place hold using the set dash mailbox search uh, uh, PowerShell commandlet and you can remove uh, a uh, an in-place hold uh, with the remove mailbox search commandlet to remove an in-place hold. Configure OWA access. Outlook web app OWA also termed Outlook on the web Allow, allows users to access their Office 365 Exchange Online mailbox through a web browser. Uh, while a large number of Office 365 users will access their Exchange Online mailbox through the Outlook client uh, software on their computer or mobile device, uh, in some scenarios such as when they are using a kiosk computer or uh, in, in an airport or any public computer, they will want to access the mailbox through a web browser, um, allowing access to Office 365 uh, or to exchange online mailboxes through OWA uh, does provide users with convenience but also exposes the organization to risk. Uh, many users do not exercise due care. Uh, when using uh, computers in airports or internet cafes or any public uh, uh, place and there are uh, many instances where user credentials have been captured by uh, malware and in installed on those computers uh, provided for public use. Uh, these credentials can uh, be used at a later point in time uh, by attackers to access organizational data because they can gain access to OWA uh, or even a user's uh, Office 365 subscription. Uh, for this reason, uh, many organizations disable OWA. Um, as smartphone users are able to access Office 365 Exchange Online mailboxes through the Outlook app uh, available in each vendor's app store, uh, fewer users actually require access to OWA when um, away from their trusted computers. So uh, another thing that, that some companies do is that uh, they disable OWA uh, from outside the company. It basically defeats the purpose of, of OWA. So uh, you can still use OWA internally if you don't have the Outlook client or you are at a, a friend's computer. You could still use OWA inside the company or if you're at home you have to use a VPN connection to then uh, connect to OWA. If OWA has been disabled for a user, like in this case, 
and then later you need to enable it's very simple you go to uh, the recipient uh, uh, link in the exchange admin center uh, find the mailbox select it and then just just click on enable it's that simple you use the set dash cast mailbox uh, PowerShell command lit to enable and disable OWA on a per user basis. And obviously, if you want to enable or disable, disable OWA uh, to all the accounts in the company, then you can use the get dash mailbox uh, command lib with the uh, result size unlimited parameter and then you can uh, basically uh, if you look at the example over there the second uh, PowerShell command lit, um, you can disable OWA for the entire company uh, by uh, getting the uh, mailbox with the result size unlimited command lit. Configure Active Sync. Active Sync is a protocol uh, primarily used by uh, mobile devices uh, that allows access to email, calendar, contacts, and tasks. Active Sync is enabled by default on Office 365 uh, Exchange Online mailboxes, uh, but in some scenarios you might want to uh, disable Active Sync. And, and to disable it, you just basically go to uh, the properties of the mailbox, as we've seen in uh, previous um, uh, screenshots. Uh, you go to the mailbox features and you just click on and disable um, and, and that way that user won't be able to connect a mobile device whether it is an iPhone or an Android uh, phone uh, it won't be able to connect it to the uh, exchange online environment. Uh, another way even an easier way to uh, disable um, exchange active sync uh, it's just basically go to the Exchange Admin Center under the uh, uh, mailbox section on the recipients uh, uh, option. Uh, look for mobile devices, and, and here you can either uh, enable or disable Exchange Active Sync, and, and the same thing you can do for OWA. You can either enable or disable OWA, uh, which we just talked about. you can use the set dash cas mailbox command lit to enable or disable uh, active sync as uh, shown in the examples over here objective summary archived mailboxes can be accessed by clients running outlook 2007 and later as well as people uh, running Outlook web app on computers. Uh, remember, you cannot use archive mailboxes if uh, users use uh, web app or the Outlook client on mobile uh, devices. Archive mailboxes cannot be accessed from uh, mobile versions of Outlook. Oh, here we go and cannot be accessed from Outlook web app when used from a mobile device web browser. Uh, litigation hold is applied to an entire mailbox and preserves the contents of that mailbox until the duration of the litigation hold expires, including modified and deleted items. It can take up to 60 minutes for a litigation hold to be enforced by Exchange Online after an administrator enables the hold. Uh, you can enable litigation hold on a mailbox using the set-mailbox uh, uh, PowerShell command lit. Uh, when litigation hold or in place hold are enabled, the quota on the archive mailbox is increased to uh, 100 gigabyte from 30 gigabyte. Uh, in place hold differs from litigation hold in that only the items that meet the query condition will be protected rather than all items in the mailbox. And finally, only users who have been assigned membership of the discovery management role group can configure query based in place holds. 
actually there is more about the re uh, objective review uh, in place hold is managed from Windows PowerShell using command list with the uh, mailbox search noun and the in place hold parameter you can disable and enable Outlook web app or OWA uh, also termed Outlook on the web through Exchange Admin Center or by using the set dash cast mailbox commandlet with the OWA enable parameter and you can disable and enable active sync through the Exchange Admin Center or by using the set dash cast mailbox commandlet with the active sync enable parameter. Objective review. Uh, question number one, which of the following Windows PowerShell command lists would you use to disable Active Sync and Outlook Web App on several Office 365 uh, Exchange Online mailboxes? And the answer is the set-cast mailbox. Uh, question two, which of the following Windows PowerShell command list would you use to enable litigation hold on a, an Office 365 Exchange Online mailbox? And the answer is the set-mailbox. Uh, question three, you want to configure an in-place hold for all mentions of the phrase Project uh, Hovercraft in all Exchange Online mailboxes in your organization which of the following Windows PowerShell command lit can you use to accomplish this call? And the answer is A, new dash uh, mailbox search. And, and finally, which uh, of the following Windows PowerShell command list can you use to disable but not delete an in-place hole? And the answer is the set dash mailbox search. These are the type of questions that you uh, need to uh, be able to, to answer. Uh, uh, one way or another and um, there you go that's um, objective 4.3